Hey everyone, Laura here with Rags to Rags, and today I'm going to be using up some of my scrap fabric to make this patchwork lampshade. Isn't this gorgeous? But before we get started, I want to ask you a simple question. What do you do with your scrap fabric when you're finished with a project? Let's just say, for instance, that you're a quilter and you just finished this absolutely stunning heirloom quilt for your guest bed. You had leftover fabric because face it, we know it. we always have leftover fabric, right? And you decided to make a rug to lay beside that bed. Now it might be a toothbrush rug, it might be crocheted, it might be twine woven. Regardless, you made a beautiful rug to coordinate with that quilt. But now you've still got some scraps of fabric, so what are you going to do with it? Well, I suggest that you make a lampshade because wouldn't that be cool if you had a lampshade to coordinate with the rug to coordinate with the quilt and all of a sudden your guests come and they get to stay in that beautiful guest room and it's absolutely stunning and they're like wow so i'd like to add to invite you to to save all your scrap fabric round up a really beautiful basket and i don't care how small or how large those scrap fabric are throw it in that basket because we are going to be uploading a lot of videos on exactly what to do with all that scrap fabric and it's going to be really awesome. So as always, if you're going to follow along with us to make this gorgeous lampshade, you're going to need some supplies, right? So the first thing I'd like for you to gather up is what is called Mod Podge. And this particular Mod Podge is Mod Podge fabric because obviously we're working with fabric. There are many different types of Mod Podge. Now this is going to run you about nine to $10 but a little bit goes a long way, so it's a good investment in many projects. If you'd like, while you're picking up that Mod Podge fabric, you might consider picking up this Mod Podge spray-on acrylic sealer. Once your project dries, if you want to spray this on, it's going to give it kind of a sheen, but it's also going to protect it from the elements. That's up to you if you want to do this or not. You also want to round up a sponge brush. Now, I like to use this little one inch sponge brush. They're relatively inexpensive, probably 50 cents or, or even less. I feel like I'm more controlled when I'm using this size, but if you don't have a sponge brush, a paintbrush works just fine. You're also going to round up a pair of shears. You're obviously going to need a lampshade. Now, I would like to suggest that you might consider going just to your local Dollar General store, which is where I picked up this base for $7 and this shade for $5. So for a $12 invested investment, isn't that pretty? Also, while I was there, I also picked up this little cutie for the same price and a different type of shade, which is really cute too. And I can just see that in a nursery. But if you don't want to spend money on it, just walk through your house because there may be a lamp that's just begging for attention and you could use it as well. So Dollar General or DAB, Salvation and Goodwill, doesn't matter, but you're gonna need obviously a lamp, at least a lamp shade. And then of course, what you're gonna need is some fabric. So I rounded up some fabric scraps. Now these are all cut approximately two inch by two inch. They don't have to be so, so perfect in size. They can be virtually any size or shape. These are the ones we're gonna use for this project. Essentially, it's the same fabric that's in this, but I've just added a little touch of green that I thought would be kind of pretty. So round up your, your, um, the materials that you need for your project, and we're gonna get started right away. So what do you say we get started? The first thing is we're gonna take this lampshade that I picked up at Dollar General for $5, and I'm gonna remove the plastic from it. Beautiful, beautiful lampshade. We don't need that plastic anymore. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Mod Podge and my sponge brush and I'm going to apply a thin brush right at the base of this little lip here on the shade. Don't, don't worry about getting messy or whatever. You can get as messy as you like with this because at the end result it's not going to be seen. So I've got this one little section done right at the tip of this area here. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to start picking out fabric. And all I'm going to do is lay these little strips of fabric right at the bottom of that edge of the, of the shade. And I'm going to keep on adding it. Now, if you decide to overlap it, which I like to do sometimes, you can add a little bit of 
Mod Podge right to the edge. Pick up another little piece. And again, I've kind of trimmed these already to kind of two by two, but you can do them any size you want. And we're going to continue on around. You can add as much as you want. It doesn't really matter. And you can put it right over the top if you want to. We're going to continue on just adding some little pieces of fabric right around the edge. Just make sure they're nice and secure and then placement that you want. A little bit more. I'm going to keep on going. These sponge brushes are so awesome to work with. Okay, let's add a little, this one here. We're going to overlap it just a little bit. Right at the bottom of that edge there. I don't know who invited, invented Mod Podge, but I'm telling you what, it's just an, an amazing product. Here we go. We're going to do some more. Just It doesn't matter. You don't have to be nice and neat and tidy. I'm, I'm generally kind of that personality, but with this product, you can go wild and crazy, and it's not going to make a difference. Just, here we go. I'm going to keep on going around the fabric that I've selected for this project. Overlap it just a little bit. Add the next little piece. It can be very, very random. You don't have to really put a whole lot of thought in it because I can assure you, whatever that end result is, it is going to be stunning. Do you see the difference in the, the size of these strips? It doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter at all in the end project. So don't try to be perfectionistic about this. Just enjoy it. Just have fun. This is a probably a 30 minute project an hour once it dries. But you don't have to really worry too much about being exact on these because it's just it's just supposed to be fun. Oh wait a minute, I did two of the same color. Look at that. I'm just gonna stick that there for a minute, take him off, and I'll come back to him later. Let's put the orange one there instead. See how easy that was? I duplicated the color. I don't like it. So I changed it up just a little bit. Let's put this one here. I think this would be really pretty. Slide it right up there to the edge. And I think I skipped this guy too, so let's put him right here. I got a little sloppy there, but that's what's cool about this. You can be as sloppy as you want, and it doesn't really matter. Look at that. We've already finished the top round of this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to do this other side. We're going to come start at this, this end down here. I'm going to add a bunch of Mod Podge right here. We're going to start, I think I'm just going to start with this yellow here. As you can see, I'm really not paying a whole lot of attention to design. I'm just paying a whole lot of attention to how much fun this is. Well, let's see, that was there. Let's do this little pink one here. Slide it right up there to the edge. Cut it down just a little bit. Because this little guy here, I'm going to come back to him in just a minute. He's not been forgotten. All right, now it's time for this pink guy. I'm going to pick him back up because. We don't want him to be orphaned in this project, of course. Great. And we're back to the beginning. So we're going to start over where we left off. I just kind of went straight around my little cornucopia, cornucopia of fabric here. I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to design interest. I'm paying more in, in, interest in how much fun this is to do. Just a little high. That's a good thing because I can adjust it just to where I want it. You know, when you're making these, think about all the gifts that you could give, make these and give to, for instance, wouldn't this be a really, really, really cool nursery gift? A little bedside lamp or right by that rocking chair when you're rocking her to sleep. Make a little lamp and just put a little 40 watt bulb in it and It'd be so cool. What a wonderful, unique baby gift you could give to somebody. Or 
you know, how about a little girl's princess room? You could be dazzled with all kinds of beads and stuff. It'd be so, so cool. She could remember you forever. Be a really, really unique gift. You see how sloppy I am with this? You don't have to be this pretty little orange one here. How about making a sports shade, lamp shade for a little boy? Because you can find fabric with a football or a baseball on it. A seven year old or eight year old little boy would love a really cool lamp in their bedroom. Let's go just around this one. I'm going to go straight around the circle here. A little carousel of fabrics. Or how about. Hmm, a sports logo. Your nephew just went off to college and he doesn't have a lamp in his dorm. You could put his favorite team logo on the lampshade. Every time he used that to study at night, he would be thinking about you. So many wonderful uses for these shades beyond just your guest room. I slipped down a little bit, so that's okay because all I had to do was just move it up. I'm going to shift that over just a little bit so it kind of covers up that little spot right there. See how forgiving it is? Okay, so we've done the top and the bottom. They're very irregular, and we're going to start in the middle now. I'm just going to find a place, it doesn't really matter where, apply some more of my Mod Podge. And we'll start right here. And like I said earlier, we've got a lot more videos that we're going to be posting to this channel on what you can do with your leftover fabric when you're done with the project. Lots and lots of projects. And you're going to love them all. This is a sloppy project that turns out so amazing each and every time. And the cool part of it is you can make this in less than an hour. And so all of a sudden you find out, let's see, I'm going to do this one, that you've got a baby shower to go to this weekend. It's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even thought about what I was going to get for her. Go to your little basket of fabric scraps. And make her a lampshade. Mama's gonna love it, particularly every night when she rocks that little one to sleep. She's gonna be thinking about you. And you'll be proud that you thought of such a creative gift to give that little one. A whole lot of thought in doing this, a whole lot of love. And creativity. How about, how about this one? If you put one on there and you don't like it, take it off. Put something else on. It's a smorgasbord of fabric. That's what it looks like. Okay. Nearing the end of this row, we've got one more row. I think I'm going to add this one. And we're going to do a little overlap on this one. I'll just slide that up just a little bit because I can. Even that out a little bit. Anytime you see this Mod Podge here, when it dries in 24 hours, it will be clear. You won't be able to see it anymore. So don't feel like you need to cover up for any mistakes or anything else. Just smooth it out. So look at that. Just kind of blended it together. Stretch that fabric if you need to. That way I kind of kept those upper tiers better and same. Okay, now we're going to come back down this bottom side. And we're almost done with our project already. And all we're going to do is come back in with another row of uh, let's see, which one should I do this time? I think I'm going to do an orange. Hmm. Yeah, that looks good. And here. 
Oops, you know. Uh, how about a pink? Oops, I'm guessing about seven more and we'll be done with this project. As simple as that. My granddaughter doesn't know it, but she's getting this lamp. Okay, now I've kind of messed it up just a little bit, so all I have to do is go back in, tap, tap, tap with my fingers. Her birthday's coming up in October, so I'm going to give her a beautiful lamp for her bedroom. And I think she's going to like it. We'll find out. One, two, three more. You're going to want to give this about 24 hours to fully cure, but if you need to have a gift sooner than that, guess what? A great hack for these is to take out your blow dryer and well, I'd probably give it six or eight minutes and you'll have this totally dry and ready to give as a gift. So you don't have to wait that full 24 hours if you don't want. One more. I may need to put a second one there because I've got a little bit more of a gap. Um, I think this is a pretty one. I'm going to put this one there. I think I'm going to put one more right in here just to make sure we got a good coverage. Looks kind of sloppy, doesn't it? But I assure you, tomorrow it's not going to look sloppy at all. Okay, so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wait and let that. Go, go, through, go around and make sure you've got good coverage on all your pieces. That one looked like it was a little bit lifted, so I'm just going to dab on some more. You can already see that it's already drying. Oh my gosh, it looks stunning. I love it. A wonderful patchwork lampshade. And like I said, tomorrow, see all this, this Mod Podge here? You won't be able to see it anymore. But right now, inspect your work and make sure you've got all the corners laying down nice and pretty. Wait your 24 hours, or if you like I said, if you want to expedite the process, use your blow dryer, and you can just, six or eight minutes, whoops, there's another little piece there. So inspect it real nice and good, okay? Make sure, because there's a little piece that's kind of lifted up as well as here. Once it's dry, you won't have any lift, but make sure that you kind of inspect your work before you end your project. Now you can actually put it right on the bottom that you've selected and let it dry that way. There we go. You can kind of turn it around and make sure, just kind of inspect it, make sure it looks really good to you. And then of course you'll put the lamp, lamp or the uh, bulb in before. But anyway, give this 24 hours or use your blow dryer to expedite it and then put another coat all the way around of your Mod Podge. Make sure you give it a really good one more layer coverage of this wonderful product. And then, like I said, if you want to use the acrylic spray, you can do that too. But essentially, that's all there is to it. And at the end of the day, you've got this absolutely stunning lab shade for wherever you choose to put it. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for many more videos that we're going to upload to this channel on what to do with all your leftover scrap fabric. But in the meantime, next on the agenda is a three-part video on twine weaving. I'm going to share with you all my favorite hints and tips to assure your success. So as always, thank you for staying in touch and make it a great day.